And here I go. This is Flash at the Dark Table. Live, I think. We'll find out in a moment. Unless I'm prematurely verbalizing here. I should be live. Okay, Grimner says, there he goes. Thanks, Grim. I have the hell of a time saving these uh, links to stop and start the broadcast for whatever reason. I don't know. Operating procedures just bore me. So I try to make my own <laughs> as I go. And it doesn't seem to work very well for me. Anyway, welcome to the dark table. And I will be your guide through this crap this week on this Saturday, all by myself, because Miss Mary is just having the worst freaking year, as far as uh, misfortune is visiting her on a semi-regular basis these days. So, I was reading, the, well, anyway, let's do the, the typical stuff here, and I'll get to the chitter-chatter in a moment or two. But thanks, Grim, for let me play here on the radio in your RLM chat room. And we've got bots and bodies to entertain all of you. And they go as follows. we got Barman, Beetle. Well, at least they're logged in. They may, may be off doing shit. Sometimes I do that too. Barman, Beetle, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Esmo, Chelsea Doom, Circulo, hello, honey. Frumpy work. Uh-oh. I'm pushing buttons here. Hold on a minute. I've got something fucked up. There we go. Uh, Frumpy work. Graham Z. Jays, Nines, Jays, Prince. Rob works. The bubbler. Trust no one. Vanna White. Weather dork. Woodman. Phantom. Beth Z. Buzzkiller. That's me. I, I'm taking a break off my normal name in the chat. C C six six. Cyborg, Noodle, and Siv, E-R-Y-C, Eric, I would say, Frumpy, Kozu, Kiss, Matt, W-J, 2 Mr. Snake, Pancakes, Mental, hey, Mental Power, Pone Sauce, Q-U-R-70, Salt Lake City, Mike, hey, Mikey, Smart as The Holiest, Roger, and uh. And I think that that's the, um, List I've got of chatters, some of them chat, some of them lurk. Sometimes I lurk. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the shitball we call life tonight. Uh, things, for me, I, they're not that bad. But, uh, I live in a place that's like, uh, like I make it up, like I make up stories as I talk. You know, about where I'm at, what I'm doing, but... Hey, I've got a witness in the in the chat room right there on the RL screen that actually has met me nose to nose and knows just what a fucking tyrant maniac I, I truly am. <laughs> so, uh, I, because uh, I, personalities clash and all this shit lately, really bad lately too, and, and it's just been this year. On most people's personal levels, it's just been one fucking disaster after the other. And man, I'm I I miss Hansel because for the before he stopped coming around, he loved to shove it down my throat about the, the Danes were going to shoot me up full of drugs that I didn't want in me because you know they publicly went uh, positive on the mandate on the vaccine shit, but they had a back door to get out of it. That we didn't, we weren't uh, prepared for. I suppose that was that mink bullshit. Anyway, the ends justify the means. They killed off a few minks to uh, bring it to the public's attention just exactly what these lying thieves and powers uh, and seats of decision were actually up to. I think, and the people it took them nine days to say, "No, we're not going to. If you want it, you can get it." But you're not going to shove it down my throat. Thank you very much. Just like Arlo Guthrie. Right, honey? Because <laughs> I don't want to pickle either. And if I did, I sure as hell wouldn't tell anybody about it. Oh. Hmm. 
Ah, oh, thanks, Mental, because you know you you've seen it. You you were here. You you it would have been nicer if it had been the summertime, but uh, you're here at a cold time of year, and it was tolerable. Nothing was. Uh, it was just a little cold, yeah. But there was uh, memories to have about people that you wouldn't normally get to meet in any other freaking way except through the internet, and. Me and Cirk had a few friends come over from other countries to visit us here in Denmark. And uh, it's kind of cool. I like it. But those days are long over. There won't be any of that anymore. <laughs> because of what I so blatantly re regard as the greatest hoax in the history. And I say that because uh, religion is good. And politics is good. And education is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great hoaxes, but this has its participants, it's got a percentage of them that are willing victims of their own stupidity. And I'm, I'm not talking about read a book and all that horseshit, what I mean is so. The very things that the government tells you are always to prove out to be a bunch of bullshit. Never, uh, Never what you're told from the beginning. And then years go by. and Wow, they were lying. Who knew? Well, that freak over there in the corner that nobody wants to fucking talk to, he's usually the guy that knew. <laughs> that's, that's me, just in case you, you were a little confused about it. Uh, I'm supposed to write some notes for the show, but I'm a little stoned. And I'll make something up at the end, but I don't know. I'm just going to ramble and rod because I was kind of hoping Mary might jump in on me. See, we lost Moose, but that's okay. She don't like me either. I'm so lonely in the world on the internet because people don't like my opinions. It's very, uh, uh, it's not like a personal thing. I don't really give a shit. It's more like it makes me feel that uh, solitude thing where, oh, crap, here I am. Five people in the room, and they all think I'm crazy. Hmm, I wonder why. Could it be because we don't agree on things that, in the overall of life, whatever life is to you, you don't have any input into these things either way. Either you participate in them willingly, or you are a victim of them, or you try to avoid them. But they're there for all of us to enjoy <laughs> Society society is such a fucking failed mess of greedy slobs trying to poison each other. That's the way I see this. That's the way I've seen it for many years. Um, my personal experience with the state, personal experience with medical. Uh, if I hadn't had a personal friend that knew a surgeon, I would have probably died. If uh, had to go, had to go through the process of paperwork and you know being high enough up on the uh, social chain structure financially to deserve the surgery, but I wasn't. So they were dragging it out, dragging it out. And my paramedic Rumi says, "I've had enough of this bullshit. I'm gonna go see Pat Sellis." And I thought, what the fuck does that mean? And it turned out to be the doctor's name, a guy that was going to save my life. And I was in pretty bad shape by the time that he finally saw me. And he met me on a Tuesday, and he had me on the operating table on Friday. <laughs> so there wasn't a lot of uh, persuasion involved in this guy's you know, taking a look at me and deciding, when can I get the first table? And, and he got me through, and and he did four uh, four hernias and two surgeries six weeks apart. So that was a, an interesting period of time in life. And I survived it. I don't know why, but I'm still here. You know, I guess maybe all this, uh, <laughs> all the first 54 were for me to get where I'm at and slow down and relax, you know. Try to enjoy life and not be in that rat race. And when I was in Copenhagen with, with Cirque, 
I started to realize, you know, looking around me, I've always been a city dweller. There's been those, you know, a month here, a couple of weeks there where I wander off into the country, uh, take a job or visit somebody and whatnot. But I always would migrate back to the, the things that I was familiar with, what I knew best. And when I got to Denmark, I think for the first time it dawned on me how uh, hopeless and just very unattractive city life had become to me, you know, because it's, things just, uh, <clears throat> they creep up and slap me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't think I spend a lot of time thinking things through. I just react to them. And I tell people what I think. Now, as a result of being open with Cirque about what I thought of her city, instead of her getting pissed off and, you know, breaking up the relationship, she says, well, Maybe we should move to the country. <laughs> and, excuse me. And here we sit, seven, almost seven years together. And I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel like, you know, I've done uh, periods of time in cities where it was, I was itching to, to leave at a certain point. You know, sometimes it would take months, sometimes a couple of years. But eventually, that day would come, and I'd go, man, I, I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> and me and Sir got this little house out here about six years ago now. And I have yet to wake up in the morning and go, fuck, I wonder what's going on over there. <laughs> now, I'd like to say it's because of Cirque, but I don't, I don't know. It could be a coincidence, just the timing. Or maybe that's what all this stuff is really about. Fortune or misfortune is all about your timing. When you decide to be in certain places at certain times to do certain things. Now, Mary had a little misfortune this week. Well, uh, last night I was informed that Sock Puppet had the... Well, he, he died on Thursday. So, you know, no matter how bad I feel about you know, what goes on in my boring little freaking Danish life. It's, it's drama-free, basically. You know? And the uh, the attachments that I have outside of Cirque and her family is basically the Internet. I had a few neighborhood friends. <clears throat> you know, they come by and we have, well, they came by last week. <laughs> this is a weird story. I, I, I'm sure you've not heard the names, but I rec I. I refer to the kids because this couple is quite a bit younger. And they hit their three-month together thing the other day. They were coming by the house. They had a kayak. And uh, they just came by unannounced and said, well, we're, we can put this in our basement, but we're on the way there and we were hoping we could put it here until we you know, made room and figured out how to get it in there. It's like 20 foot long or something. It's huge. Long kayak thing. So we we have a pretty good sized yard. And I said, no, let's just wrap it up in a thing and keep it out here. And come check on it. If you think it's too cold, wrap it up in something else. We'll, we'll just keep it on this property for you instead of you having to go through all that moving and shit. Anyway, so uh, the next uh, the next day we, we decided to smoke some stuff and have some dinner and socialize after Cirque got off work. Now, I'm sure in, in some countries right now, like England or Scotland, where I was just at, those actions we played and participated in freely and openly in front of everybody are illegal. You cannot do these things under... Uh, any circumstances any further you got to be masked and you got to be social distanced and how do you you know how do you do these things with people if you can't get close enough to talk to them <laughs> but i don't know maybe you scream and yell a lot but uh a small fit see something like that to me is a small favor you know and to a jew which i am there's also that financial thing you know, where, hey, I can make a 
few dollars renting my property out to this guy to make his life easier, you know, because I'm a wonderful guy. And the thought to to rent, phew, I ab- I abhor that whole, you know, I'll help you if you, you know, there's bartering and, and when you start charging people money for doing them favors, it's retail. <laughs> That's what that is. And uh, I've harped on this for years. Years and years back, I was probably about, I don't know, my 20s or 30s, something like that. And a guy, Don Smith, and he says, you never do anything for money that you're not willing to do for free. And then starts car up and leaves. Okay. And I thought about this for years and years and years. I still think about it. And when I look at the, the physical actions and activities that I participate in in life, I would be willing to do any of the things that I do for money for free. No, nothing. Uh, there's no effort in my life. You know, simple. It's very. It's a very easy life. But getting to the point where I'm at, that was <laughs> that was a lot of work. You know, I had a lot of things to be aware of once upon a time. And now I just sit in my living room and oh. We got to go down to the train and grab some smokes. Come on. And uh, I'm at the age where that satisfies me. You know? I'm not a hermit like uh, Grimner. I, I don't think I'd ever, uh, I'll never give up my fondness for my fellow carbon based life forms. Some of you I can't communicate with, okay? But. I wouldn't wish you any harm. You know, like, let, let's use Hansel, for example. He disappeared recently off the site. Hadn't seen him. And I thought, at first, well, maybe because he believes that Biden's going to be the president. and <laughs> He didn't have the nut to you know, take the shit from all the people that were going to slap him around for it. And uh, time went by, and then, then I thought, I read somebody say something about maybe he got called in. and I don't believe he's military. I think that's the story he tells. But all that aside, through the entire thing, I finally, somebody posted, uh, anti, posted a thing and checked if he'd been on the site. He had. He'd been on there for like a minute looking for somebody. And and as much as I don't care for this fellow, I I was relieved that he was still around. (laughs) Because... I, I'm not uh, I'm not vicious. I don't wish prison and punishment and death on other people. I just wish them everything they wish for me. Now, I don't have to know what that is because I've got everything that I want and everything that I need. So now, if I wanted to be greedy, I, I could chase more than I have. But eh, it seems kind of pointless. Um, I get along pretty well with my partner. We uh, we seem to have not murdered each other for almost seven years. And me and her disagree at times about some stuff, just like everybody else. But it's uh, it's always overlooked in the long run. You know, personal opinions about whether the world is round or not are fun on the Internet, you know. But they're they're not something people really seem to take uh, seriously. Like I don't think mental got uh, he didn't seem to take me all that seriously. Like like I had a stand on it. He seemed to take it more like I just questioned both sides of the coin. And when I asked for proof of either, they they both offered me the religious thing. Well, the science here shows you. No, no, the science shows you. Prove to me. And when People, they expect when they speak, probably as I do, that you understand what they're saying in the sense that they mean it. In. Well, that doesn't always translate. Sometimes you can say one thing to ten different people, and they all come up with a different response to that one thing. So, hmm, I don't know. But, I, I guess... We're, what are we doing here anyway? You know, we're, we're here on these tax farms to feed wealthy people. 
so that, you know, they can live forever in luxury and comfort. And we, the people, have been poisoned in every possible fashion that you can poison a carbon-based life form without killing it too quickly. They, they want you to live. They just want you to um, pay through the freaking nose to live here. <laughs> you know, and if you ever say anything about uh, it, any derogatory comment towards money, usually brings on the other side going, oh, you're a communist, oh, you're lazy, oh, oh, I, I have fun with all that shit, because fuck it, taxation is theft. And there's too many people in the game to run it any other way, because billionaires, well, they're billionaires, they don't give a fuck about you. Politicians are getting wealthy while they're sitting in seats of decision and the puppets that dance and you know do all the promoting on TV seem to, I don't know, they, they got how many million people actually took the time this last couple of weeks ago to go out and cast a fucking vote so that they could think they had something to do with picking the fuck that was going to ruin their life. Exactly, Grim. Exactly. A lazy commie. You know, that's uh, that's probably the most. <laughs> it's it's amusing. I don't know how to explain what I think about it because people that I know in life, there's to this day, country to country, whatever, there's a percentage of people that just are um, useless. Their, their worth is immeasurable because they're just existing. They don't contribute. They're just alive. They just do shit. Okay. Why am I any better because I might do something than the guy that doesn't do something? In, in the sense of uh, the right to live, I, I don't believe that holds any value. Everybody's got to fucking work, and it's got nothing to do with my judgment of their worth. <laughs> it's, it's a personal thing, you know? And I also think that if I thought so much of myself that I was going to do something about the lazy guy, I probably had to run for you know position of power and <laughs> tried to get into politics or some more shit like that. But that's not me. You know, the real me is it's just a live and let live kind of guy. Until I'm pissed off. And then I like to play with words. Yeah. And it's amazing how words make us all, me and you, dance a certain way to a certain tune. Because <laughs> of our own personal indoctrination into this shit life that we call society. You know? And society doesn't work. It doesn't work here. It doesn't work where I've been from. It doesn't work in any of the places I've ever visited. But we're, we're taught, we're, we're kind of forced into this thing with the alternative, of course, is anarchy. And then they define anarchy to you in a way that doesn't have anything to do with what anarchy is. <laughs> so, you know, it's like telling the blind guy that the elephant leg is a, it's a tree trunk. You know, how's he know? If he only touches the leg and the animal doesn't move or make noise, he might might believe you. So that's how I feel life has treated me. Yeah. They tell me, oh, you can be this, and oh, you can be that. And when you find out in the, like the finance world, when I found out what I had to do to actually progress in that business, I chickened out. I didn't have the nut to be that cutthroat and to know those kind of things about people and expect to stay alive you know, playing with information of, of that nature. So uh, I got out of it. But, you know, these people were bankers selling millions of dollars of uh, loans. <laughs> and and I had this knack for making cold calls to uh, prospective uh, salesmen that might want a position in a better company for a better wage. <laughs> And there was a, a script, of course, to go along with, and it was just amazing how well received I was, and 
personal data these people would give me. And though, this is back in the geez, late, late 80s, 87, somewhere in there, 87. And things have changed since telephone days. But even back then, it, was, uh, it wasn't hard for me to call a, a, a strange banker in, a foreign, in another state and in just a few minutes find out how many millions of dollars they were selling every month in, you know, in uh, loans. And then move them on to a closer, you know, after whatever long period of time it took me to get to that point. But two or three minutes after a hello, and I'm digging into this person's personal freaking <laughs> finances, what they're doing. And, yeah, wow. And looking back on it, I, I, don't, I don't approve of what I did, but I did it, you know. So guilt, uh, I don't know. I learned a lesson that, hmm. Well, it brought, I guess, all the things that I did brought me to where I'm at in the moment, you know. And I have a bad day here and there, just like everybody else, but they don't last very long, you know. Cirque's known me for a while. So, I, you know, I've got uh, witnesses to my radio personality. You know, it's part of me. It's not all of me. There's, there's a little of this and a little of that, just like everybody else. But I'm, I'm super opinionated. Compared to most people, you know, doing the radio took me a, a while to get comfortable doing this, sitting there talking to myself uh, about, you know, just what I think about. It doesn't mean it's real. It doesn't mean it's right or left or true or wrong. It's just what I think. And telling other people what I think sometimes seems to translate like I'm telling them what to think. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you think difference does it make to me like rob works there you are uh just wait till they set it off i i will assume just by that one sentence he's probably referring to the uh, the reset let's see what he says to that hey pancakes i know pal you you're you've been a good friend over the years and it, it was uh it was i'm not real sociable as you found out stand with me but it, you weren't too bad of a house guest. <laughs> it's just a small house. Uh, <laughs> it's it's me. I know about me. Cirque knows everybody that knows me knows me, and people that don't know me don't. Doesn't <laughs> it doesn't really matter. But if you ever got the opportunity to come back for another visit, you're always welcome to it. If you can find a way around the state. But, uh, fuck, man. See, that's what I mean is the things that in my life that were once common, you know, a friend is in trouble. Hey, come over to visit here for a while. But I'm in Jamaica. Well, so what? Get a plane. Come here. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll put you up for a bit to get better. And, uh, without all the, those words behind it defining everything, it was, yeah, come on by. And it turned out to be a good thing to have done looking back on it. And I'm glad it happened. So, I don't know. Life has always been like that. It's always put real interesting, uh, down to earth, more or less. Maybe pancakes. He wouldn't be considered down to earth by some people. But to me, he has got a real, real good way of just looking at stuff instead of judging everything, like I do. Ooh, I'm a judgment guy. And I know it. It's not like a secret. And it comes through in my writing somehow, but even when I don't mean to be, whatever that is, you know, it's my nature or my stop, my behavior, whatever the fuck it is that other people see. And the older I get, the less I care. I don't think I give a shit much when I was young either because I was looking out at this fucking fantastic world just doing the damnedest things so i i've got stories that i well i can't tell because i'm married and this is radio some things aren't aren't fit for this format but i have done some of the most outrageous things that are socially unacceptable mostly around you know some kind of drug or something late hours of the night where you know people uh, congregate loud music and dancing to, uh, you know, get fucked up and 
have a good night. But here we are in 2020, and now the normal is everybody's afraid of getting a flu. Because they read a, a thing, or they saw a TV show, or whatever the fuck is going on, it, it's, it's just like uh, going to the moon, or 9-11, or Kennedy. It's so big that I, right from the gate, I was suspicious. Nah. In fact, here, let me brag a little bit about this. I was actually two years off. In 2018, I started harping at Cirque. Go, Cirque, something huge is coming. Something I can't even think of what they're going to do. And uh, 18 came and 18 went. And she, well, okay. Well, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> okay, it didn't happen. All right, maybe it's 19. 19 came, and I kept harping, ah, something huge is coming. I feel it. Nothing happened. Uh, nothing like this corona crap. And then when the corona crap came, I went, aha, you dirty bastards. How fucking dare you do this to people? Hmm. And there are a handful of folk that share my uh, enthusiasm for the COVID hoax. And there's some that actually, they believe that this is true. <laughs> and I know repeating myself is what I do. So my belief is that all this crap has been planned for many years to cover the impending financial collapse of the United States dollar. Okay, and Rather than panic everybody with what they did, could have panicked them with, Eh, let's control and scare them, too, at the same time. How do we do that? Well, we'll tell them they're going to get a virus and die. We don't do what we tell them. Now, I got to admit, if this had lasted two weeks, I would have believed it. But when it lasted two months, three months, four months, nine months, I went, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> Well, I was whining long ago, but I, mean, you know, I figured it would pick up a little traction and more people would start noticing, hey, hey, Johnny, notice that the state's lying to us. But what we don't have is that mainstream media shit going on where, however, 100 million, 200 people, million people listen to this fucking nonsense every day because they think they're going to protect yourself from something. Yeah. The virus is going to kill them. Hmm. How? How? Tell me fucking how. They have never explained. Okay. But they have made a lot of movies, you know, and they threaten you with the gas. The gas is going to kill you. So see that starts your mind thinking in that in that uh, terminal threat way. And then you start believing but wait a minute, you can open up under your sink and you can find five bottles of shit that if your dog got into, it would kill it. So, where is the concern for your safety in anything that we have uh, access to in the public eye? It's all a bunch of bullshit. You got it. Well, Salt Lake City Mike knows it. Pancakes knows it. Who else knows? Rob Works knows it. Grimnir knows it. You know, I mean, I'm not completely isolated in the, uh, well, I guess they would call it the negative way that I see this terrible pandemic. But I have uh, the ability to read. And not only do I have the ability to read, but I have the ability to listen to other people tell me what they think about whatever is going on. and But hmm, I guess it's the same thing in the long run. But I have listened to both sides. And both sides, I've come out of it thinking, hmm, dead tissue, you can't, you're, unless you're violently freaking ill, there is no way for you to get sick from a viral infection unless they inject it into you. If you're healthy, boom. So when they figured that part out, some people are going to be healthy and they're going to start to catch on. 
Then they made up this story about how, well, you can carry this by the millions, millions and millions of guys and gals out there can carry this and not show any symptoms and give it to other people, which is complete fucking nonsense. It's not true. If, if anything, it would be like one in a million people this would affect. And the rest of it is just story time because the government does that. Now, I survived four hernias and that was a miracle in my life still be here after what I you know physically went through so I, I know about being ill but after that once they had me uh, repaired then other illnesses started to surface that wait a minute when I when I did find out that I was being scammed it was well well afterward it was about five or six more years but for a period of time, because all my peers were in medical and telling me I was doing the right thing, I believed them. See? Now, once I did the research on the internet webs, I found equal amounts of people that would tell me, yep, these things are good for you, as I would find that said, hey, wait a minute, think about this, you might be fucking yourself up. I went, hmm. So, I took a chance and threw the pills away and figured, well, I'm either going to croak at this freaking high blood pressure and it's going to fucking kill me, or I'm going to not. And it's been uh, since 20, uh, 2011, so nine years. Now, maybe I'm the exception to all the medical fucking rules that all you other people live by. I don't think so. I think I'm pretty much the, uh, the machine is relatively the same. You know? And just like an engine, you know, you... If you fuel your car with crap, certain parts of it are going to run out, wear out, sorry, not run out, wear out, uh, erode, decay, you get, like you have a clamp on a rubber hose and over a period of time you get a leak in it. Well, we're similar to that, you know, and if you fuel us improperly with enough shit for a long enough period of time, key parts of your anatomy are going to wear out. That's, that's a given. But what they don't tell you is that these things are done to us on purpose, by design, through Rockefeller medicine. And most of the crap that you're sick from is man-made in the first place. Diseases were not supposed to be managed to uh, keep you in any condition. Diseases are warning you, hey, something's wrong, we need to fix it. You are not eating something that you desperately need. Could it be a vitamin? Could it be a vegetable? Could it be a fruit? I don't know. Could it be a dead cow? Something out there that grows or is alive could be harvested and you can eat it. And whatever ails you, you will be fixed from being sick. But what we're taught is you go to the doctor and they prescribe you medication to manage your illness and I didn't understand all that shit when I was actually going through it because I was ill and I believe to this day what was actually making me ill was my body reacting to these fucking pills I was taking <laughs> so by luck I go to the doctor to get them refilled and these people they want a blood sample and I went what the fuck do you want a blood sample I don't need to give you any blood just refill my damn pills and they said well no these pills have uh, we they do damage to your kidneys. <laughs> I said, "What? <laughs> oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Can you give me a minute? I'll be right back." And then I just left. <laughs> Went back. That was the end of my medical ex experience with doctors. It's been nine years, and uh, I don't know. Who knows why I'm still alive? It it doesn't make any sense. Everything I seem to do physically goes against the common you know the common man's knowledge of what's good for you. I don't do much of any of that. <laughs> and still, uh I'm pretty fit for a guy my age. You know, I'm capable. I may not be a runner anymore, but I could still swim a little bit if I take my ass down to the swimming pool. <laughs> but again, laziness has uh, spoiled me living here in Denmark, so I guess I just uh, 
what do you call it? Taking taking liberties you know, that I'll probably pay for later. In fact, I think I'll take a liberty right now in honor of my good friend Mental. I'm going to burn one for the Mental Man. <laughs> How I've been on for excuse <clears throat> me, I've been on forty. I, I try to do at least one one show, one hour show. I hope you guys are entertained with my jibber jabber today because uh, I don't have anything to snivel and complain about except uh, personal personality quirks, and that's not important. You know, in the end game, it, none of that shit matters. What really matters is uh, how you treat yourself, <laughs> how you treat others. Ah, I've had my ups and downs with people over a lifetime. You know, some people I like. Some people like me, and some people I don't like, and some people don't like me, and all that kind of horse shit. And, uh, and what I realize, you know, at the end of the day, before I put my head down and go to sleep, I don't give it, really give a shit about um, mental concepts clashing. I, have, I personally believe it's a necessity. What I'm against is physical conflict, you know? Disagree with me all you want to. That's okay. Call me stupid. Call me a this. Call me that. But keep your fucking hands off. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mikey, that's right. And, uh, and the internet makes that possible. You can really get into some um, deep disagreement with other people and take it really personal and all this and that and the other, but shut the machine off and you're gone. So, it le leads me to think that the conflict has got to be with myself, because none of this electronic stuff, it, it doesn't hit my reality button like uh, sitting down with my friends and having a meal the other day. You know, that, that, that physical contact. And, of course, that is what the governments of the world have been controlling for the last years. They want us weak. And they want us uh, sick. But they say the exact opposite to get you to that uh, <laughs> that part of life. You know, They want you to feel desperate and unloved, unnecessary, Im immaterial. That's what all this social shit that they've been doing for last year. It's so that we'll have a a horrid self-awareness and feel bad. Well, you go out there and you got to wear a mask and then you look at other people in masks. Good God. I mean, I, I cringe I, when I go to the cigarette store. I, I got my uh, scarf and I hold it up in my face with my left hand. And David's got his clear glass shield kind of backed off his mouth so he can breathe and we're playing this freaking, you know, COVID game to do a little commerce and wow. And all the, through the whole thing, we just laugh. And he says, oh, this will be over in January because he's a insider to the trading laws. He knows what's coming. And all the gossip in, in the world about such a little place as Denmark is, it's uh, fascinates me. There are 19 states. Um, that have a bigger population than Denmark <laughs> out of 50. <laughs> and some of those states are, are, there's a lot of territory, but they don't have a lot of population, like New Mexico or what else. So Texas is huge. So I would say Texas because, man, that's a landmass, but the population of Texas is pretty small. And I came out of California, so... Crowded city compared to what it is today, I don't think I could survive um, emotionally, you know, to see the decay and how things have changed socially. People living in the street, <laughs> crap, crap, crap like that. Anyway, so uh, we've been following Deke Jackson very closely, me and myself and I, the three of us. I like Deke. I think Deke goes a little too far with his personal opinion on the climate thing. But he's the first one to say, I do these links because I feel like doing them. If you disagree, that's okay. You fuck off. <laughs> if you if you came here to disagree, leave. I don't 
care if you disagree or not. It's just, if you know what my stand is on something, why come to my site to be antagonizing? This is the way I hear that. Not, he's being a bully and he's right. Hey, this is my opinion. You don't like it? Fuck off. <laughs> and that is how I hear people, you know. Because he's funny about it. Some people, they can't do the comedy part with the uh, insult. I don't think I do it very well. I think when I'm rude, people think, wow, he means that. Sometimes I'm just playing rude. <laughs> and I'll do it on purpose just to see what will happen. It's like a, I don't know, what would it compare to? An emotional weakness. You know, when you know better than to do something, but that little, that little Loki inside the fucker that can't resist a, a, a bad joke. <laughs> and you do it anyway. Well, whatever. But how I, how I still see this is just the electronic world. You can turn it off anytime you want. Real life. Real life is a lot less controllable, I think, in a sense, because, you know, if you've told other people the complete truth 24 hours a day, you'd be on the Internet alone because nobody in the fucking world could tolerate that because we're human, fuck's sake. You know, I love Cirque to death, but perfect, no are you kidding me? If, if she was perfect, she would have never married me. I'm not perfect. <laughs> so probably one of the strongest attractions to her are her flaws because there's a lot of smart people in the world that, uh, I don't know, their expectations are too much. And it, I, I, I think I have them sometimes, especially about this COVID crap. You know? um, I guess... Because of my experience with uh, previous COVID-related illnesses that were going to kill the whole planet that never took off, never killed enough people. But here we go, quoting Deke again. He'll tell you how many millions of Africans die of uh, you know, diarrhea every fucking year or malnutrition or lack of something and Nobody gives a flying fuck about them because all they're for is to steal their resources and keep them where they're at, <laughs> wherever they are. And even their own do to them what we do to them. Otherwise, you wouldn't have places like Dubai. <laughs> so I don't really believe that wealthy people give a flying fuck about anything other than being wealthy. Helping other folk. Ah, that, that's a bottomless pit. You can't make any profit helping other people. And then even if you do, you know, I've read things over the last couple of years about Donald Trump to fluff him up because he's a capitalist pig and all that, that. So people would post things that he's done over his career, you know, generous financial things to help other people. Now, sadly... I think that these kind of things, if you do them, shut the fuck up. You're a billionaire. You don't need to be praised for doing it. Just do it. That should be the reward of doing it. But if you've actually listened to anything Donald Trump has ever said, I'm sure you might share this opinion about Donald Trump. You can't say nothing bad about Donald Trump. Just like the nigger before him, Obama. Or, what's his name? Creepy Joe. Fuck, when he was in power, Jesus Christ, you couldn't say shit about government. People be all over you about being a racist, and you hate niggers. No, I hate presidents. You can't hate presidents. We always got one. Oh, just fucking stupidity on top of stupidity. It, it, it was horrible. No, it was horrible. I was living the last 10 years in America in a Republican military zone. <laughs> oh, God. With hair down to the middle of my back, smoking dope. I was not a popular fellow in town. Let me tell you that. But nobody did anything to run me out of town. They just didn't like my stand. So, you know, I was at least, I got the luxury of that 
freedom of speech when it existed in society. I got to go to public places and, and act the fool if that's where the alcohol and drugs took me. And still, here I am. You know, Nothing I did ever ended in anything so drastic that it couldn't be re repaired. So I've never killed anyone. And uh, there you have that, you know, willingly or knowingly. Maybe I have with my voice. I've been, <laughs> I shot him down. But we all kind of have a, <laughs> a tendency to uh, take the, <coughs> the written word and the verbal word a little too far. I do it. I do it all the time. And I blame it on my indoctrination. I was raised by a, an American and an English woman. So I got to see things that other my peers didn't have a, any idea what I was talking about. <laughs> it, it, was, it was an interesting uh, childhood. Take a sip of water. I would, but my wife is in the kitchen, and she didn't even notice. So it wasn't that bad. I just... Took a little too deep of a toke on the old piper there, Mr. Grimm. And, hey, just because you don't smoke them. <laughs> and you're going to cough from something. So, should I should I try to go on or should I end this crap? I don't know. Haven't done it. I've been avoiding... Hmm, I've been avoiding doing the solo radio on purpose because uh, I don't think that I have any contribution to anything anymore other than uh, what would appear to be complaining about every fucking place or bragging about where I'm at because <laughs> I feel pretty uh, fortunate to be where I'm at when all this crap that I've seen on the internet for the last year <laughs> has it's just sucked all the fun out of places I've lived I wow I can't imagine being in a city that was under a curfew. I've never endured anything like that. I've read about it. You know, it's not like it's new to me. It's that I've never been through it. So to me, it's like watching a movie, you know, uh, curfew and you can't go anywhere. And, hmm. and if you do go out, you have to be uh, doing essential business. And this isn't everywhere. I understand that because I'm somewhere where it's not. But the places where it's happening, wow, that saddens me to the core that people have been manipulated. Oh, thanks, sir. Sir just saved me, Grim, with a cup of elixir. Because, see, she does the wife kind of stuff. And uh, I do the, the old grouchy guy kind of stuff. And she'll bring me a cup of coffee. So, you know, it kind of works out. <laughs> I don't know. She likes to do it, and I like to take it. You know, that I think that's how that works. And then there's some things that Cirque doesn't like to do that I don't mind doing. So, you know, life balances out if you allow it to. And then never forget to appreciate. I do this because I'm, I'm not good with um, people. And I forget to say nice things to other people. Cirque included. It's not just you guys. But... I think mental probably would, if, if you think back, I, I'm not rude and, and horrible. I'm just standoffish and, and uh, withdrawn from praising others' actions. <laughs> Unless they really do something exceptional. And then I don't shut the fuck up like I'm doing right now on the radio. And oddly, I've gone weeks where I had things on my mind such, but I really didn't feel the desire, whatever the fuck the desire is, to sit down on the radio and talk for a while about, you know, shit, how things are, how I feel they are, people I know, people I don't know, you know, uh, life, how things were, and how they were is very similar to me to how they are today, yet society, see, they've put different, I don't know, different restrictions up that to me were always there in a sense because I was always hiding my pot. 
because I'm a pot smoker. See? So, you know, living in the shadows of society as a long-haired pot smoker was easy. It, like, I would assume it's the same as, uh, say, Grim or Rob, you know, with their isolationist kind of thing. I, Grim, I was talking to Rob, the, uh, not talking to, I was chatting with Rob, I think, yesterday. And he mentioned that uh, they took all the all the fun. Or I can't write, repeat them correctly, but the basic gist of it, going out to eat isn't anymore. It, it's not fun anymore for him. He, it's not good. It doesn't feel right to him. And they've taken that out of society. And it, and it slapped him because that was joy. There you go, Rob. Sorry about misquoting you, but took the, I understand that because when they shut down the bar, I was in a fit. You know, hey, wait a minute. You know, if I don't want to go, that's one thing. You know, I should be able to have that choice. But to be told you can't go to a bar because we're shutting it down. Wait a minute. Who the fuck are you, and why are you shutting it down? And when, when you know what, or when you believe what I believe about all this, the first thing you're going to do is, hey, <laughs> be a victim. And sure as fuck, I, I felt victimized. My. My freedom of choice was stolen from me by a complete stranger for no fucking good reason. Now, they're going to claim all in the future. They're going to claim, oh, well, the mistakes were made. Oh, well, then no. These, there were no mistakes made. Hey, hey, hey Kate, say it, hey, to you mental, you popular dude. <laughs> mental, I, I think mental is, uh, yeah, he, he's somebody to say hi to. He's, he's always got a smile on his face, and uh, never he never has a bad word. Not like me. I've always got some shit to say about something. Not mental. And that's what I mean about balances. What in a world attracts me and mental together in the first place is beyond my knowledge and understanding. But it was easily explained to me by Mr. Larry Woods. Ha! I'll go figure because it was Larry that opened up my mind to the idea about frequency and vibration. Kind of explained to, you know, to me about me and Cirque. Why we're so fucking bonded. Can't separate us. It's really weird. You know, when she goes to visit her sister, we're, we still stay in contact on the freaking wire. <laughs> and I still, to this day, I don't, I don't really, I don't stop her from going. But I don't like being here alone without her as much as I should. <laughs> you know, when when you get the night off and you're home and you're all by yourself, and and after an hour goes by, you look up from the computer game you're playing and go, Ah, oh, where's Cirque? <laughs> then you know you know things are okay. Ah, oh, Woody's ranting. Hey, Woodman, how the hell are you? I'm on the radio. He might. He's in the chat room, and yeah, Dan Van Meter, Larry rocks. Larry is, Larry's a unique personality. He's one of the, he's not the first guy I met with his credentials and his attitude. He's the first guy I, I've been able to stay in contact with, because uh, the ones that I met earlier in life, I, there was no way to stay in touch. Internet hadn't been invented yet, and paper and pens have been uh, misplaced. I had a phone book once when I was in North Carolina of 10 years of collection of people and businesses. And before that, uh, places I'd been and people I'd have been in contact with. And, whatnot. and I, I left it all behind me in North Carolina and, and I, I refused to go back to get it. So it was all whatever. Could have been sold, could have been given away. I have no, no knowledge of what became of it except that it's not in my possession anymore. And the lesson, wow, the lesson I learned by losing everything when I was in Scotland was no matter what you think you have in life, it's got no value unless it's alive. <laughs> you know, money will come and go in your life, that, 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 depending on how you chase it. There's ways... And I've given people answers on the internet webs, and they, they think I'm making fucking stories up or I'm being sarcastic. But 
let me let me make a point of saying this. I might go on a little longer. It's already been an hour, but this is on my mind. There are billionaires out there in the world that uh, they have programs for people. They give away loans. They call them grants, but eventually they want the money back. But you get it for a period of time. <laughs> if you can make something, you can justify doing it. And sometimes maybe not even have to pay it back, but eh, money's money and people are people. So, but you have your idea and you sell the idea to somebody. They fund it, you do it. Uh, and there's ways to do this. It's been done, it was done well before the internet was ever invented. Yet, there are so many cutthroat lying pricks on the internet that it's hard to find a an honest man to do business with in this life anymore. <laughs> Which leads me to Larry Woods, because Larry is one of those kind of guys. And I had the fortune of Vinny introducing me to him and you know, meeting him on the radio and talking with him and learning shit. And now me and Rob do a, a weekly thing with Larry and sometimes I play around, but for the most part that show is for them to uh, talk about the electrical stuff that I don't know fuck all about. You know, and I learn things by association. And I hope, and I think by the bit shoot numbers, that over the period of time, we're, we're coming up to like in a month, almost 200 people have, you know, checked in to see the show on bit shoot or to hear it or whatever. And for our topics, I think that's a pretty good amount of people to uh, check out an internet, you know, podcast in this time in history because people are more interested in being entertained. I'm one of them. I, man, I'm constantly looking for a fucking movie to take my mind off the depression that the world is in. <clears throat> you know, but uh, I don't know. Maybe to other people, I might seem like I, uh, I swim in it and I enjoy it. But the truth is, actually, I'm so saddened by the collective passism. You know, the... Uh, Mm -hmm. the wanting to comply to get along has got a price tag on it that money cannot fix. And people are going to be ill from wearing masks and they're going to get face rashes, and bad teeth. And these aren't just opinions. I mean, the mask boxes tell you right on freaking packaging, these things don't do shit, except they look stupid on your face. Yet, the voters have managed to s insist that we have huh, representation that leads us down this fucking stupid path to ignorance. Now, I think if they would have just come clean in the beginning and said, we're financially fucked, let's do something smart, get our brilliant people together and, and find a way out of this that in two weeks they would have done exactly that and do it open source online for the whole world to see what is the best foods to eat. Put them in fucking alphabetical order. Put them in something. Make a list. Make it available for people to open a link and click and look at it. Go, oh, wow. But they don't. They lie to us with uh, competition. See, brand X is better than brand B. Let me tell you why. <laughs> No, they're both poison to the fuck, and they're bad for you. And what is good for you is uh, always overpriced by the government, regulations, blah, blah, blah. All these things that they tell us are good for us are actually the demise of us. They're, they're the reason we're dying. <laughs> you know, well, we're gonna, how, I mean, at, in the miserable fashion that we're living in compared to what life could be. Ask Rob Works. Rob has a better understanding of the uh, mechanics behind what Larry speaks of. I understand the principles and the dynamics, but Rob's got a, he's got a hands-on experience with, hey, I know how to make that, or <clears throat> I could if I approached it properly. Whatever the case, I don't even get to that. I have no ability to manufacture hands-on, any of the stuff that these guys talk about. But I have the 
understanding of what the product does. So, you know, in the in the group, I'm the weak link as far as knowledge goes, but understanding these guys is, a, I think it's a matter of if you want to or not. They're very clear, in, you know, they don't confuse, they don't use fancy words that they're not willing to define. Um, did I, did I go off? Uh, am I, go okay, stream went dead, okay. Okay, now I don't know if I'm back, but my buttons are pushing up over here on the uh, uh, Rocket Broadcaster Pro, so I think we're back. I don't know. Okay, it says, okay, live on the RLM player. I guess Grim could edit the two together and I'll write up some notes, but I don't know. I just was rambling on about, you know, how I try to survive the day of uh, reality versus the uh, the information. Yeah, I think that something died because the spe uh, the uh, rocket broadcaster was still running one. It must have been something in the background. I'm not talking to anybody. I'm not running any games or nothing. In the so... I think I need to take everything off this freaking computer and just reinstall this fucking Windows shit all back onto it again. I just keep putting it off, asking anybody to help me. I sure as hell don't want to do it with my wife. Me and Cirque don't, don't do computer work together. I don't know. She knows computers way better than me. It's like, go away. I'll do this. And then I feel bad because she's doing it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I was on... Just on a tear about, you know, we're we're in this world where all the things that we're told are a bunch of bullshit stories based on fucking lies. And when people find out, they, they that doesn't seem to affect them. How do you which which word is correct? Affect or effect? Effect is emotional, right? And affect is physical, so it's, it doesn't affect. Is that correct, Grim? I know Moose would probably know. Uh, I don't know if she's listening, though. Is it? It's effect. Yeah, okay. Effect is the noun. Effect, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the way I remembered it was effect is uh, physical or emotional, and effect is physical. So, might have that wrong, too, but words are so much fun. <clears throat> And, you know, today I was listening to uh, what me and Mary were talking about on the Dork Table a year ago. Hmm. And, in a sense, towards the end of the show, we were we were negotiating big shit happening, but weren't, we weren't sure. We were just, it was like, uh, you know, those uh, ideas you get. And people call them feelings. Oh, I got a feeling this is going to happen. No, you didn't. You had a thought. You had an idea. But no, you didn't have a feeling. You're being screwed by the state. You know, that's how they con you. They con you to think that your feelings are thoughts when they're not. They're feelings. You butt nugget. Learn to decipher. The English language is such a trap. Hmm. Hmm. We're trapped in it together. I'm not above or below or any of that. It's just the way I talk. I'm one of those uppity Jew Mexican fuckers. <laughs> you know, I grew up in my own gang, so I don't have the uh, I don't have the ability deep down inside. I've I've thought it through. I'm not loyal to uh, fictions. I thought I was for a, a long time because carrying that American passport around the fucking places I've been, man, that has been one fucking, uh, it's been a status fucking thing. It was. Then I met Cirque. <laughs> anyway, but uh, looking back on it, you know, wow, what a fortunate, how fortunate I was that of all the countries to own my paperwork, that I wasn't owned by Zimbabwe, or maybe Peru, or Afghanistan, 
You know, I could have been born any fucking where. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe that's not really how life is. You're exactly who you fucking are. And that's all you were ever going to be. <laughs> the time thing, eh, that's just random. Some people die. And some people live. That's life. Now they got all this corona shit to uh, manipulate the way that I look at longevity. So I can live in my last days on earth in fear, terror, that some bitch out there is going to sneeze on me, give me the corona, and I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And uh, sadly, I didn't follow that road. You know, I just I don't think I was raised by my parents, who are both dead, you know, to live the end of my life cowering like a little girl afraid to get a cold. My father would slap me like a little kid. And my father kept his paws off me for the, you know, long, long time. But I think if I would have showed up in his life wearing a fucking mask, afraid of getting the flu, yeah, he would have probably got violent over something as ignorant as that. Didn't I teach you anything, you fucking idiot, is what he would have said. Sadly, not here to prove it, but, you know, that's uh, my assumption. You know? Where I came from is not not the world that I read about. The world I, I live in, exactly, either, now that there's so much compliance to this fraud. And go, well, oh, it's a virus. Yeah, people get the flu. Okay, whatever. The details about it are, are very... Um, they're, they're designed in a way to make you look stupid if you reject the virus as a fact. A given. This is science. And if you challenge it, what's your credentials? My credentials are 60 fucking years of... Living through government bullshit and lies. <laughs> Nothing but bullshit, since I can remember. But this is true. Hmm? All of a sudden, after all the last hundred and something years of being poisoned, and ripped off, and controlled by fucking laws to not have you smoke weed because, well, it's the devil's lettuce and it'll take you to heroin. When the truth of all that turned out to be, wait a minute, they lied? <laughs> Not one apology in all these years from these people that willingly destroyed other people to profit, to make a paycheck. They put other people in cages, took their fucking money and their homes and their trucks and their shit, put them on display like fucking jokes to laugh at in a prison cell, and said, the war on drugs. Right? All based on some fucking guy named Aslinger lying to Congress. And that there's there's documentation of what this man said in you know, on the record, and this is what matters. Doesn't matter what the truth is, it matters what goes on the record. <laughs> so legal is real fun. There there's a there's another fucking game I could live without, try to live without. Oh man, I avoid um, I avoid commerce and business and all that horse. I don't want no fucking part of that nonsense. So this COVID thing came along, and it, it seems as man hindsight. I wish I had the nut to lie to people, you know, and go, hey, you know, I saw this coming. Yeah, I said, oh, I better get the fuck out of North Carolina to save my happy ass. Be safe somewhere <laughs> where people don't have to wear a mask. But, of course, that's not the case. Got to do it now. So, well, at least I only have to wrap a scarf around my face like an idiot. I don't have to actually strap on a muzzle like a dog. That's going to, you know, see, my personal thing, that goes, goes too far. I see people in cars. I finally saw that today. Somebody driving a car. <laughs> with a mask on. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Wow. Who are you protecting yourself from at that point? I mean, the mentality of it. What could possibly terrify me enough 
at this point in life, right? I'm 61 years old. I've said it a million times, I know, but if you had never heard the show before, you might not know that. And at 61 years old, I'm not afraid of no fucking flu. I don't think I'm afraid of uh, the neighbor had cancer. I didn't avoid him. <laughs> so, hmm, wow. But cancer isn't contagious. You know, I've always wondered is, is uh, I've never met anybody that had cancer that I had an opportunity to discuss to them with them. What made you feel so sick that you went to the doctor in the first place? Because I don't, I don't really trust medical diagnosis. I, I've got no way to know that if I see this guy in a suit or a white coat or whatever with this thing around his neck and all that shit and his little name tag, and he tells me I've got cancer, how does he know I've got cancer? And just because I've got cancer, what what does that really mean? You know, what is so life threatening? That's my lack of knowledge about what cancer truly is, as far as physical expression. How do you know you have cancer? Well, you go to you're feeling bad, okay, and you go to the doctor and the doctor says, Hey, you've got cancer. Well, then you go, hey, guess what? I've got cancer. Well, I went to the doctor, and I came home with high blood pressure. Went, wow, hey, I've got high blood pressure. What the fuck? What I didn't know at the time how to do, or that there was a possibility that anything existed, was to question the doctor's opinion. I had no idea about any of that. I never never gave it any real rational thought. So, hindsight being twenty twenty and all that. But to be honest enough to say that I believed them for a period of time, that that's that hurts me to, to admit that. I don't want you to know that. <laughs> I want you to think I was the all-seeing, all-knowing Flash, and uh, I knew exactly what was going to happen. But sadly, I, I didn't. Things just... My life has just been a constant... Let's see what happens. And uh, so far, so good. I've had some good shit happen, and I've had some bad shit happen. And I've met a lot of fun people along the way to uh, pass the time and learn how to do shit and enjoy stuff. And then I've met people that uh, I aggravate or I annoy to keep me aware. I'm just another schmo just like me. <laughs> it's... it's, it's, it's I think when you're a happy person or a, a sarcastic fuck, whatever the fuck you see in me, that people can take it personal. I take people personal, sure. But caring about it, eh, not really. I don't know. I'm just having fun. It's just like this, I think Deke opened my eyes to the radio thing when I heard him say that. You know, I'm doing this because I want to do it. I'm not doing this for you. You either, you, you don't agree, then so what? And in the long run, here's the beauty of this whole game. What we verbally or mentally agree or disagree with, it creates a wavelength, okay? And that does affect shit. I, I understand that. I don't know how to define that part. But Larry's got me in into the, uh, and Rob, don't want to dismiss Rob because he's, he's half of that team. But the two of them together, they bring me this uh, another way to look at stuff. And then I, I stick a toe in. I'm old. I don't got a lot of time left. And I don't want to spend all my time studying about, you know, the future. Uh, the future is going to happen. I think basically what I'm interested in is my present. You know? What makes me tick? Eh. And I don't think I'm any different than the next guy. Not really. We express ourselves in different ways. We see the world in different ways, but we're all just people trying to fucking get through it. And the governments in some places are so brutal to their uh, citizenship. Wait, they, hold on, let me drink this coffee. Ah, oh, that's good. Oh, Soikel. Soikel saved me from not thinking ahead because I don't see, I don't plan things. I just live, 
Must drive my wife up the fucking wall. I can't remember, uh, unless I look at the computer, I never know what day it is. I don't know, it's Saturday from a Monday from a nothing. And now with her work at home, and then every once in a while, once a week or so, they try to drag her into the city to go to the office to do something. Now her thing is to try to find ways around going to the city unless she wants to go to the city. To you know, then, then it would be if she wanted to go visit her sister, for example. Then going to work that day would be, uh, hey, let's do it to that day so I can knock this shit out at work that they want me to do, and I can make the most of it. And uh, wow, what a what a change that it put the control in her hands finally. <laughs> in a way that's so subtle, <laughs> but uh, without you know going on too much about what exactly she does, but she does a lot of it on, on the uh, computers. That you don't need to be physically sitting in the same room with somebody to uh, to meet with them. And then every occasional, you know, there's an occasion weekly or biweekly uh, or every other week, whatever that bi monthly where they do need to sit in the, in the company. Maybe it's privacy. They don't want, because they work on some pretty important things. And when you're in business, you don't want your competition learning what you're doing. So you do certain things off the net so that they can't be, you know, plastered all over the Internet for the people to see. <laughs> they call that business secrets. <laughs> and, uh, wow, this company's got more money than the damn government. So, yeah, they're in huge debt. And they carry a lot of, it's an insurance thing, so they carry a lot of people. Hmm. Ah, just sharing a slurp with all you wonderful folks out there. And, and let me let me talk about Larry and, and Rob some more here. Because, uh, to be really honest, the world, the world hasn't changed. The world has been the same forever. What's changed is the amount of um, control that the rich have over the poor, I think. Maybe. And I would say that because civilization has brought clusters, you know, and, and automation and, and all these techno technologies. You know, we have internet and instant phones and instant rice. And we have people making instant meat in instant laboratories. So the science is there to fix everything that's been fucked up. But sadly, it's the science that fucked it up. <laughs> and the politicians working hand in hand. You gotta, uh, gotta do this smaller. When it's this big and things involve, you know, global this and global that. That what that secretly means is you're getting the the worst possible product available with the most possible profit attached to it that they can legally get away with. They could supply you with something that would last a hundred years, a manufactured product made out of hemp, for example, say a car. Bumper to bumper made out of hemp. Fueled by hemp, 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 fucking hemp. And that would serve two purposes, in my opinion. One is hemp would help clean up the environment and replace oil. But, see, there's no profit in something that you don't have to replace every six years. <laughs> or five years, or two years, or ten years, whatever years it is. It's not going to last you a lifetime. And with all the technology and all the brilliance that we have, you know, as a collective, it saddens me to the freaking core that this is the best we can do <laughs> and brag about it. You know, oh, look at how civilized we are. We're wearing masks to save grandma and everything. Uh, and, you know, there you go. There's your collective intelligence in one sentence. Now, I'm not as rude as Deke in that respect because, but I am, but I didn't, I didn't come up with it. But he made a point the other day of saying, out loud, in front of other people, all this drama about the corona, and these are my words of his words, all they're going to do is they're going to help you, help grandma live a couple extra months. This is what all this is about. 
or grandpa. You know, you're going to, and they're, they're tied up in a fucking home anyway where you can't visit or see them. But you're going to go through all this drama so that they can live a couple extra months. And, and somehow or another, that makes perfect sense to the uh, conscious public. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, well, you know, I steal ideas from other people just like everybody else. They're not, not all the things that I think are original. Crying out loud, I get influenced by others. Sometimes I got the fortune of re remembering the name of the person that said it and being able to quote him back. But most of the time I butcher it. <laughs> so, I, I, I. I'm not real good with dates and uh, names, but ideas and, and uh, specific, you know, what it means is way more important to me than who said it. Sadly, dropping names of other people that said it usually helps when you can prove the other guy actually said it. That's the, I, there's the point I was getting to, you know, because we came out of the Oswald Shat Kennedy story, you know. Well, who's, how, what? Oh, yeah, and the bullet, look at all the magic things the bullet did, and they did diagrams and showed you how this magic fucking took place, right? And people were just bombarded with it by through the media, news, TV, news, TV. It's what we had in the day. Well, it worked so well with Kennedy that when they pulled off 9-11 in the moon unit, the moon landing, they tried it again. People didn't have the common sense to understand that you're not going to talk to the president from the moon in, in uh, accurate time. <laughs> There's going to be a couple of hours of delay in your phone call. <laughs> but, uh, being as they never went to the moon in the first place, guess what they did? They pretended to talk to the president on the phone. <laughs> oh, my God. And here we are, 2020, falling for a freaking virus story. Like, how how could you not know that you're being lied to? I mean, didn't, what's that, swine flu, H1N1, they've done it and done it and done it. It's every four years. For what, 30 years, they've unleashed by some magical way in a time when there's a political election, <laughs> they've managed to unleash a virus on an unsuspecting public that needs a vaccination. From who? Who will we go to for a vaccine? Hey, I know Bill Gates. He's the king. He calls himself, <laughs> I've seen a video, this idiot refers to himself as an expert in vaccines. Hmm. Well, when you make it all up, it's easy to be an expert in a field that truly does not exist, in my opinion. And I get my opinion from reading stuff off the interwebs. Now, you're free to believe Dr. Fauci. <laughs> my favorite so far is the Trump got the corona, kicked the shit out of it, and whatever. Four days. <laughs> right. How, how do you know he got any corona? How, who, where's your proof? You know, I want to see the test results. Because the first thing that you've got to learn and grasp in this corona hoax is the test is a story. It's, a, it's bullshit. It's nonsense. There is no coronavirus test. There is a test they give you. But they know how to control the outcome of that test. And I believe that because my wife went for the coronavirus test, and I am sure that in her bloodstream somewhere, somewhere, is a fucking coronavirus. But she came back negative on the test. Now, how is that possible? How can your body contain a strain of information that this test does not recognize? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, that's easy when you actually control the results of the test. Well, it's kind of like the election, isn't it? <laughs> the, the system just, they just fuck with us, you know, and they do it in ways that if you resist openly or talk badly about it, you yourself look just as ridiculous as the thing that you're mocking. So... It's a it's a no win fight. We're we're never going to get out of this corona crap. 
There's far too many people willing to believe it and not challenge it than there are that are, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't really make any sense. You'll find very little of that in the future. In fact, you'll find, well, maybe not on the, oh, we've got a few fellas on the RLM that are pretty open about their uh, reluctance to comply to the state mandate and go long because they're going to save grandma for two more months by God and country because they're not. Some people know that. Hmm. Speaking of grandma, sorry about, I guess Mary's not listening, but uh, Mary's uh, been helping her mom for since she recovered from her head-on collision <laughs> earlier in the year, Miss Mary's been visiting down up, helping take care of their mom. So she doesn't have to live in a, a strange place. She can stay in her house. But she needs help. Apparently, somebody broke into the friggin' house while Mary was there with her mom and stole her fucking pocketbook. And if I read it correctly, luck had it. Her phone wasn't in there. She was charging it. They didn't grab the phone. But she had to spend the whole day replacing all the shit that was stolen from her. Now, these are the things that home pe- you know, homeowners, circ, people, door lockers worry about. And uh, me, circ will always lock the door. I'll always open it and let the cat out and just happen to forget to lock it again because I don't never think of it. It's, I have to consciously... When I do it, think, relock this door, and if I don't, I forget to. Boom. But now that I know somebody on the interwebs, you know, personally, we've got friendship goes back. Something horrible happened to her like that. Then it makes it, see, that makes it more real to the person that knows, you know, that knows you rather than the person, well, I'm immune to the news. Maybe it's the same effect. You know, because I can watch the freaking news and what a bunch of shit that was. Are you fucking stupid? And other people call me names. But uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, the spoken word just some people just are immune, basically immune to it. The vibration has to be a certain pitch or tune or whatever you call that to affect me and. I might be, you know, spinning so fast it bounces off me. I might be spinning so slow that it can't stick. I don't know, but I think that that mentality, that's where the answer lies. When uh, when a person repels things, you know, just automatically without actually putting any effort into it. Because right or wrong still happens whether it's right or wrong. So, hmm, w- where does the good and the bad in all this game that we play, I don't know how I shift into this next idea without just abruptly changing, but I'm looking at my notes and I wrote down right or wrong, comma, it still happens. You know, like people, uh, they seem immersed in drama, you know, police this and shootings and uh, bank robberies, like they, the movie, I love these fucking Horrible fucking movies about horrible fucking shit happening. But I think that's because in physical life, I've never seen it happen. If I had seen it and been a part of it, I might not get a giggle out of a bank robbery. But yet, I watch these movies and they drive a bus into a bank or a van or something. And just, wow, where the fuck am I when all this good shit in life happens? And <laughs> I've decided that most of it's just TV. They just tell you shit, and you either you believe it or you don't. And that, for me, that's a. I think the only way I can actually cope with it. You know, we got coping mechanisms or whatever in our own head. And the way I deal with it, if if it's that absurd and that horrid, I don't want to know. <laughs> movies are movies. They're make believe. They're not documentaries about life they're just you know an artist's rendering of an event doesn't mean this ever took place but they can claim it did they can say subtle things like based on a true story 
Well, of course, it's based on a true story. Everything's based on a true story. It's just the end result is a lot of shit and crap <laughs> that you could probably live without in the long run. But like I've said before, my addictions, I, I embrace them instead of uh, fighting them. Fuck it. And if they're going to kill me, then that's, that's life. Dwelling on that end of life crap. Wow, what a pitiful existence that must be. Yeah. I can just imagine Cert coming home from some walking the dog or something and looking all over the house. Where did he go? And I'm sitting in, hiding in the basement. We actually have a basement. And I could go down there and hide in the dark, you know, so that I don't get sick and die. When I know deep down inside that, you know, that would probably be the thing that would do me in, would be the feeling I would have of uh, self disgust, cowering to the words of a known liar on an internet site or a TV set. You know, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> Trump got the COVID. No, he didn't. Oh, they just told you he did. And then, of course, hey, four days later, he's, look at him. He's so good. He's so healthy. See, it's those fucking Republicans. Those fucking Democrats. It is never about a virus. <laughs> it's political games. But what did they say back in, in Obama's day? Never let a, a something go to waste. A crisis. Never let a crisis go to waste. Who was that prick out of Chicago? Rahm Emanuel or some prick. What a man! I'll tell you. The people in politics that sit in seats of decision. Boy, I'm glad that they're out of my reach. <laughs> and I'm glad that they don't take me seriously because I think they're all fucking lying to us. Every one of them. And some people claim, well, they've been blackmailed, and, you know, and this, that. Who gives a fuck? Is that, is that your defense for Federal Reserve Bank practices in 2020? Trillions and trillions of dollars. They just print it up. How? Where does the fucking material come from and the space? See, it's a story. They're not printing trillions of anything. They're just adding zeros to your already existing debt and taking a bigger chunk out of what's left. It, it's a scam. I think Grimm explains money pretty well. I think Grimm, Rob Newworks, Kate. Ah, I see a lot of uh, Mike, Salt Lake City. Mike, there's a... Cowboy Tech on the chat. There's people here that, uh, I don't know, maybe tolerate is not the word. Yeah, tolerate me. Because I have some opinions that just are not shared by other people. And that's because they're my fucking opinions. I don't really care if you share them or not. It's nice when you do. But I think what's really important is, like with Larry Woods and Rob, do you take what they say and find a way to apply it to your life. It's some kind of, even a littlest way. Like me, I started to turn light switches off when they're not needed. Because Cirque has a problem with the dark, and I don't. But she knows where the light switches are. So, But she doesn't want to turn them off. And I understand that mentality about it. But if she's going to come down and make a cup of coffee and go back up, I'm going to turn the kitchen light out. And I think that, awareness was brought on by Larry making, hey, yeah, I never thought because I never cared about it. It wasn't a concern. So as I age, I find myself getting concerned with things that once upon a time bored the shit out of me. Uh, didn't give a fuck about saving anything. Crazy? Use it up. You're going to be dead tomorrow any fucking way. Who cares? And here I sit all these years later and I, and I never in a million years, man, when I was young, I never would have expected or I didn't foresee, didn't think it was going to happen this way. <laughs> but my mom did. <laughs> my poor mom. She's been gone a few years now. But uh, she was uh, pretty quick on understanding me where other people didn't. And no matter how life looked to other people, she would just say, you just have never found what really sparks you. You'll you'll get it. Someday you'll see. Now, she lived long enough for me and Cirque to get together. 
and see that that. So that might have been what she was talking about all those years. Because I have, uh, in some ways, I've softened a little bit. I think the isolation from the city all these years took a lot of the edge off. You know, that uh, being defensive in the city because people are out there doing horrible things. Accidents happen, stealing, this, that, and the other. Drunk drivers, ah, you name it. The city, it's got it. And I was living in that all those years. And I got out of that. Whoa, things are easy when they're slow. <laughs> I had no idea. And uh, I think Cirque's plan was, she said 30. So she's got 23 years of me left to go. <laughs> Poor sir. <laughs> but I, I would, I must say that my uh, my physical uh, uh, existence. I, I don't know what the right condition. There you go. The physical condition I'm in is acceptable. I'm not ill. I don't get up every day complaining about this. Oh, I can't that. No, I've been very fortunate and. Uh, Outside of being run over by a car, I really don't see a lot of tragedy happening here. But, you know, car accidents happen. So I try to stay aware when I'm walking in the street where the cars are and not get run over by one of them. It's not really all that difficult when there's like a traffic jam of five cars. I found it very easy to stand there and wait until they passed. And then there's no cars and walk across the street. Problem solved. <laughs> anyway, I could never do that where I was from because, wow, you know, 40 miles an hour um, streets where I was walking. <laughs> this is insane. Looking back on this shit, is, uh, I don't know how I got here. Sometimes I think I've um, defied reality. I should have been in some kind of a hoopla with somebody or a problem or something, and yet here I sit, unscathed. Two broken fingers and some hernias. <laughs> oh, well, there were a few little incidents along the way. I had pneumonia a couple times in life. But, uh, again, when I was ill, I did the stuff that was necessary to not be ill. You know, I listened to the people that claimed they knew, tried what they said, and got better. Not, uh, I didn't have to go to the doctor and that to, uh, to cure those things. But, I don't know. Like I've said about medicine, I, it's such a, if you do any looking, Rockefeller Medicine is a, he was really a, a snake oil salesman, a real snake oil salesman in early, early 1900s, I think. I'm not positive about it, but this is some of the things I've read. And look what he managed to accomplish, because Rockefeller owns the schools that teach the doctors, which means that you get to teach the doctors what you want them to know. <laughs> that's it. That's my aversion of what teaching is, is a collectivism of, you know, within the confines of this book, if it's not written in this book, it's not true. That's teaching. And then there's life and experience. And life and experience teaches me that the book is just a doorway to find out what's really going on. So I'll harp on people about, well, read a book. I, I'm not always meaning that the answer lies within the confines of the book. What I'm saying in the long run, but I don't explain it because I'm on the internet bullshitting around, is that some things that you do lead you to other things. You know, it opens a doorway. What I forget is not a lot of people give a fuck about opening doorways or learning anything or they don't really care. They just want to do what they want to do. and That's all they want to do. And with all my smoking and all this crap over the lifetime, I've still had the wherewithal to have other interests besides being high. <laughs> I use pot to enhance my experiences. I don't use it as a crutch. Oh, I'm going to die without none of that shit. It, this is fun. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. And some days, 
I like to have a couple beers. Some days, no thank you. It just depends on uh, the mood I'm in. And I think I've come to the decision today, maybe yesterday, I was reading about freedom on the RLM chat. And we've all got this personal expression, you know, what freedom truly is, what it truly means. And as long as uh, we're speaking in English, <laughs> Maybe it's time that people start to think about uh, Mary is on to something and the words and the things that we read, the things that we speak. And Larry's opened up things that we, and Rob, the things that we think also set a wavelength out there, you know, or they join a wavelength that already exists. And things build behind, you know, beyond what you can visually see, there's a world within the world within the world, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and things just get smaller, and the smaller they get, the less you see them, but there's still, there's things happening. So we get education and science and all this to define and explain all the wonders of the world, and these fucking pricks lie like motherfuckers to us all. And then they tell us the truth about a lot of things. Arsenic will fucking kill you, but we're going to put it in the fluoride. Don't worry. It's not enough to kill you. Just enough to fuck you up. What? Well, yeah, because see, by the time the water breaks it down, are you? Okay, so what we've got is failure to communicate, basically. We, we are, um, we're collectively taught garbage and then they got the internet and tv and newspapers and magazines and all these all these things these communication things to control the way that you see shit and if they get you young enough i'm sure it works some people are immune to it i believe and some people are just they're out of that wavelength but there's not many of them there's not five percent five percent of a collective would control the other 95%. And I thought it was 10 when I first met Cirque. Cirque's more into static, st st statistics than I am. You know, she, uh, I'm going to quit on the hour here and try to, can you, maybe Grim can splice these two together. I'll try and make some crappy notes about it all. But, you know, personal opinion is not a bad thing until you try to shove it down somebody's throat, you know? And then how do you define what that is? I, I've, I've no way to understand how another person hears my opinion other than to me, it's just my opinion. I think this about that. So what? If you cared, you do something, you know, if you're, the world doesn't really matter as much as we all want to pretend it does. You know, it, it doesn't. There's just things that are too big to do anything about. And trying to stop them doesn't go anywhere. Like this failed government bullshit these people do. You know, Instead of, uh, well, what are you going to do instead? Well, I could sit down in a half an hour and... Find a better way to run a government than the present way they're doing it. Here, I'll end the show with my, my vision of a perfect government. My perfect government pays for the uh, opportunity to serve the public while it is in office for two years. While they are in office for the two years, they are not allowed to do any commerce, to gain personal benefit. Yet, all their family needs will be met. Okay, Anything that's not ridiculous will be seen. They'll be fed, they'll be clothed, blah, 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 blah. But, they're going to pay for that seat to sit in it. Okay, But nobody's going to go without anything because of some greedy fuck trying to screw everybody on a business deal like they do now. You know? Ugh! Of course, in my pretend world where the, uh, the sitting politicians pay, what they have to do <laughs> is what the people tell them to do. Like, uh, I'll close with that. What they did here in Denmark in nine days. 
And I, and I say that because the population is so small. This place is not controllable like a big city. It's, it's harder. It's different. And they're a, they're a group of different tribes. <laughs> it's so weird. It's like being in America, but smaller in a sense. Because uh, of the different dialects from one area to the next, they speak Danish a little different. Where they don't even understand each other. So it, you know, I've mentioned this. It makes it makes my lack of interest in their language more tolerable to them when I remind them of, you know, how difficult it really is. Come on, you guys know I can never do that. It's fun. It, I could butcher some words and make you laugh, but I'll never speak Danish. So. It's it's worked out for me. I don't I don't see any other Americans here. So as long as it keep they keep it small and there's only one American here at a time. Because apparently I replaced a fellow at the bar that's similar looking. And he's aged on and doesn't doesn't show up anymore. But he was an American. Blah 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 blah. So uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just another cog in this. Uh, this freaking wheel thing that we're on, trying to uh, do whatever it is I do. I don't even think I try to do anything. I just do stuff. <laughs> and plans and all that, all that good intentions, and planning, none of that crap ever works out the way that uh, I'm told it's going to. So I've had to learn in my lifetime to adjust to the to things around me, kind of work with them. Don't, don't, don't force the neighbors to be Americans, plant a big American flag in there, let them know who I am and all that shit. Just not you know, not try to be one of them as uh, as a tool to get along and comply. You know? And and I think that whatever approach that I have to the, the people that I've made friends with over the years, they've accepted me the way I truly am and seem to appreciate that little you know, that little sacrifice where you don't pretend to be something you're not so people are like you usually falls apart somewhere. People know when they're, you know, being lied to in the end. So, mm. uh, I've got a good, I've got a good thing going in a time in history where most people are, are uh, being manipulated by a, a hoax. And it, my message to them is, what would it be? If I was in your boat, but I'm not, I can only imagine, I would be fucking climbing the goddamn walls uh, looking for a way out of it. So, yeah, okay, it, it's easy to say, Mike, but uh, I don't know. It, it's all a matter of, you, of the person's indoctrination. and Maybe their frequency, and the, the way they vibrate, attracts what repels the rest of us. You know, this little group of, of weirdos that agrees with what I think. You know? Well, not necessarily what I think, but this line of, of negative thinking is really unpopular. You know? When you go against the, the spoken word and the written word, and the educated and politicians, well, you set yourself up to be an outcast in the first place because to be against those things is socially unacceptable. So... If society really had any concern with your freedom, it wouldn't have so many restrictions. Restrictions would be minimal. You know? I don't think that uh, we all need to be told what to do 24 hours a day like a bunch of children. I don't think that most of us are, are really all that bad in the first place. You know? And the, things that, the bad things that you do in life, short of murder, um, I don't know. They, they happen. Whether they're good or bad or not, they still see putting a value on them doesn't change the uh, results of what took place. So mm. I don't know, good or bad doesn't really weigh into it. It's more like uh, how I feel about things. See, it goes beyond. You're not thinking anymore. You're feeling stuff. And I think uh, I'll end the show with that. Is I think I'm going to call today. Don't confuse feelings with thinking and uh i don't know i'll make some jibber jabber notes I just ranted on about a topic in here a topic there kill a little time i felt yakky out of the out of the norm 
haven't felt like doing radio for a couple of weeks now because, you know, like I said, I'm either complaining about how bad shit is for you or, <laughs> or bragging about how wonderful it is for me. And no matter how you say it, uh, it still has got to translate that way. And I don't, I don't wish any ill you know, on anybody, truly. I might be sarcastic in a chat room and call you a name or something, but like the rest of you guys, uh, I just want to get through this, and uh, and it doesn't look so appealing at this point in history. And there's not a lot to look forward to, so I don't know. We need to find a way to be happy in a time when being happy is like the opposite of what the world wants you to be, <laughs> I'm going to stop the server. Do I, st okay, stop, which one do I stop first? Stop the radio first or stop, the, yeah, stop the radio first. Thanks everybody for playing along with me today on a Saturday, the uh, 21st of November in 2020. I did a two-part show because I, I had my equipment die on me in the middle. And ranted and raved about absolutely nothing but my opinions about the world around me and the world I see on the internet. And I had a fun time. If you agree with me, that's great. If you don't agree with me, that's okay. You know, you don't have to. There's no, it doesn't matter. What matters is, um, to me, I think, is getting through this life, having as much pleasure as possible without fucking up other people. And it's really not as easy to do as it sounds. Thanks a lot, everybody. Catch you next time.